3.5, we're going to talk about limits at infinity. I'll start off with just a little bit of a, a recall here. Do you remember if the limit as x approach a number of f of x equal plus or minus infinity, do you remember that they, that gave us an asymptote? So basically, when you could not cross out the problem on your limit, you had an asymptote. When you could cross it out, it's called a removable discontinuity, it's called a hole. This right here will give you an asymptote at the value of And we had two cases, really. We have this case, where we gave, went to the same infinity, positive infinity on both sides, and said the limit existed. The limit was positive infinity there. Or we had this case, where one went up, another went down. We said the limit didn't exist there. One's going to positive infinity as we go from the left, one's going to negative infinity as we go from the right. And we had a way to actually determine this, if you remember. Uh, how did we determine where we had holes or asymptotes? Sign tests would do this, but how do we find out where all this stuff happens? Let's pretend we had a rational function. Rational functions have denominators. How do you find these things? Okay, let me give you an example. <coughs> Will this have some discontinuities to it? Yeah. Absolutely. Where? At zero, one, three. Which ones? Zero. Is zero going to be a discontinuity? What do you think? Zero? No. Zero is fine. Zero over a number is okay. That's okay. Um, where are discontinuities going to exist? Three and negative one. Why? Good, because if a denominator equals zero, you have a problem, right? That's how you find discontinuities. That's what I told you, a domain, from a long time ago. So what do we do to find discontinuities? Denominator equals zero. That's how we do it. We, we said denominator equals zero. We solve it down. Uh, we're going to get either holes or asymptotes. Do you remember when we get holes and when we get asymptotes? Okay, we'll, maybe we'll refresh your memory on that next time. So if you'll recall, when we take a limit of a function as we approach some number and it goes to infinity, we're going to have an asymptote. We're going to have either an asymptote where the limit exists as they both go to positive infinity. I didn't draw the case where they both go to negative infinity. Or where one goes to positive and one goes to negative, and then we'd find that with the sign analysis test. Now, there were two cases where discontinuities existed. We had holes and we had asymptotes. Do you remember those, the holes and the asymptotes? Mm -hmm. The holes. was what was called a removable discontinuity. <coughs> what 
what it meant was that only a single point is missing from that function. One little single point. That was what defined a removable discontinuity. And it exists when the numerator and the denominator equals zero at the same time. Why was that the case? Well, if both the numerator and denominator equal zero at the same point, you're going to have a factor of x minus that value that you could cross out. Remember crossing out those, those problem areas? That was a removable discontinuity. Now, or a whole. If we don't have that, if the numerator equals a number and the denominator equals zero, and you cannot cross it out and you can't simplify it, it's not removable. That means we have an asymptote. So case two is where we had the asymptote. A vertical asymptote. <coughs> a vertical asymptote. This is when you can't cancel out, and I know you love to use that word cancel out, right? Where you can't cancel out the discontinuity, or you can't remove it. Let's do an example here real quick, okay? Let's do an example. Can you tell me where discontinuities exist? So any discontinuities? How about x equals zero? Is that a discontinuity or not? Is it okay to have zero on the top of a fraction? Sure, that's zero, that's a point. Uh, give me one discontinuity. One would work, sure, because if I plug in one, I'm going to get zero on the denominator, that's a discontinuity. You follow me? So x equals one will be a spot at which we will have a discontinuity. Give me another one, so on the left hand side of the room, what do we have? Negative three would be another one, sure. Now let me ask you a question about x equals one and x equals negative three. Are they holes? Are they asymptotes? Is one a hole? Is one an asymptote? What do you think? And the answer to the question is, can you cross out where the discontinuity happens? So basically, can you cross out the x minus 1? Can you cross out the x plus 3? So are those holes or asymptotes? So those are both asymptotes, both of them. Now stop for a second, just watch. What if I had done this, please? Which one would be the asymptote in this case? That would be the asymptote here. And that would be a removable discontinuity, or in other words, a hole. Do you follow that? OK, good. So I'm going to change it back to this. This is an asymptote. And that's an asymptote. If I have just x over x plus 3 and x minus 1, those are vertical asymptotes. Do you recall how to find out what the limit is around those? Do you remember that? Yep, side analysis, how you do it. You'd put the negative 3, and you know it's going to be an asymptote, because we just talked about that. It's going to be an asymptote there. And you put the positive 1, and you know it's going to be an asymptote. And then all you have to do is plug in some numbers for those intervals, because look at, look, if it's an asymptote, look at the board here real quick, you know it's going to be one of these cases, right? It's either going to go this, that, or be opposite. So it's going to be one of those. All you have to do is plug in numbers. If it's positive, it's going positive. If it's negative, it's going negative. Same thing in here. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Same thing here. Positive or negative. Now, there's one thing you have to be careful of. One very important thing for us right now. Do you see that the numerator will equal 0 at 0? That point's not going to be an asymptote, but it will, it will change the, the sign of your fraction. So you're going to put a little marker in here at 0. And the only reason why you're going to do it is because a number in this region could potentially be different than a number in this region concerning the sign. Does that make sense to you? So that's a separator. Because if you just plug in 0, you're going to get 0, right? That doesn't tell you positive or negative. That could be a case where you're switching from positive to negative. So you have to put that, plug in a number here, and plug in a number here, and that'll tell you. So it's like having 4 here. You have just three intervals, but that's a separating marker which says 
I can't plug in just one number here, I need to plug in two different numbers. So you only have two asymptotes. There's not three asymptotes, but it's like, yes, like you're testing four intervals. Okay. <clears throat> Feel okay with this? Why don't we see what happens? Uh, why don't you plug in negative four? So how about this? Uh, U2 rows do negative four. U2 rows do negative one. U2 rows do 0.5. And U2 rows do two. Okay, can you tell me that? Have you already done the two? <coughs> when you have them, let me know. It's negative? So you plug, you plug into here, right? You get negative. I don't care what the value, negative. It's going to do that. Uh, these two rows, have you plugged in negative one? Negative. Negative? Really? Negative, positive, negative, positive. How about 0.5? Positive, positive, negative. negative. How about 2? Here's my question. Will the limit exist? Will the limit exist as we approach negative 3? From the left, we're going down. From the right, we're going up. Does it exist? Heck no. How about at 1? No. Nope. From the left, we're going down. From the right, we're going up. If they had been like this, both going up, both going down, sure. How about this question? Trick question. Uh, does the limit exist at zero? Yes. Absolutely. That's a point. There's no asymptote there. Right? That's a point. Limit does exist at zero. Ah, trick job. Take a job. Hopefully, yeah. <clears throat> Feel okay with it so far? Could you do the same thing with something like this? Same thing as something like that. Can you tell me where discontinuities exist on this problem? Where would they exist on this problem? Do you need to distribute all this out to tell, tell that? The only place where discontinuities are going to exist is where the denominator equals zero. True? So where the denominator equals zero is where this little piece equals zero. You follow? Where is that going to equal zero? Uh-huh. <coughs> so these are my discontinuities. Would you say that those are holes or asymptotes? Explain why they're asymptotes. Okay, they can't be removed. That's exactly right. Can't be deleted is what you said, but absolutely. If, even if you factored that, could you cross it out at all? <coughs> Definitely not. So these are non-removable discontinuities. Those are asymptotes. So how could you find out where those asymptotes go? Well, this says, really what we're concerned about is around the 1. Do you see what I'm talking about? So from our, our chart here, we've got two discontinuities. We've got negative 1. We've got 1. One and negative one. And what we're going to do is check where these asymptotes go. Now, look up here at the board here real quick. Normally, we would check all the asymptotes. Follow? But which one do I really care about? Do I care about the negative one? No. Why not? Well, the limit says one, so I don't care about that. I care about this.